There's a really important topic that gets almost no coverage in the media, and yet it's going to be one of the defining issues for the next generation, and that's peak oil. Now, hopefully you've heard about peak oil by now. If not, you can look it up online. There are now numerous <laughs> websites and forums which discuss it. One of the best forums is peakoil.com. The theory of peak oil is that oil reserves in the world are limited, and uh, one day the amount of oil that we are able to pump is going to plateau and then eventually start to decline. This has already happened in the United States. The United States petroleum production peaked in the 1970s. And now many people believe that this trend is occurring around the world and that world oil production will soon begin to peak. Everyone knows that someday world oil production will peak, but there's a lot of discussion as to when it's going to occur. A lot of the world's major oil fields are now in decline. Uh, Bergan in Kuwait, the world's second largest oil fields in decline. Cantarell in Mexico, the world's third largest oil field. And many people believe that Gahawar, the world's largest oil field in Saudi Arabia, is in decline, or at least has leveled off and they're not able to produce anymore. Once these large oil fields go into decline, it's going to be very difficult to reverse the trend, at least to reverse the trend with cheap supplies of oil, because the other oil fields are small, and they are in politically unstable countries, and they're also far from any infrastructure where you could cheaply extract that oil and take it to market. So many people believe that uh, world oil production is currently in plateau, and that eventually what we're going to see is less oil coming to market and higher and higher oil prices every year. Um, I've studied this subject extensively since I first learned about it in 2002, and I think I have a pretty good background to understand it, being an engineer and also having a lot of experience in politics. And I can say that, yes, I believe that uh, within the next five years we'll start to see a plateau in oil production. And you will, even before then, see oil prices continue to go up, unless there's some type of a world recession, uh, which would simply delay the process slightly. So, what does this mean? Well, even if people have heard about peak oil, they tend to have two reactions. Most people tend to kind of block it out or push it to the back of their mind and not really think about it because they think that there's not a lot that can be done. And the second most common reaction is to become upset or to feel hopeless about the situation. Um, I don't subscribe to either of those. I don't think you should ever be in denial about anything, and I think that uh, anything is an opportunity. I've made a lot of money on the theory of peak oil because I learned about it before anybody else. But even if you're not an investor, there's still the opportunity to at least be prepared for what's coming. Um, this is really going to be one of the defining events of the next generation, whether it occurs five years from now or 15 years from now. Once world oil supplies begin to level off and then decline, it's going to have an incredible impact on our entire society because our agriculture is based on petroleum, our economy is based on petroleum, our entire way of life is based on petroleum, and one of the most important issues is that our currency is a fiat debt-based currency which requires a continually growing economy which was enabled by the petroleum industry. Um, it's going to be very hard to maintain our currency once oil supplies begin to dwindle. The first thing you probably want to do is put your money into investments or your savings into investments that aren't going to be impacted when inflation continues to grow and when the dollar continues to devalue as petroleum resources dwindle. So you would probably want to invest in commodities or, or land or something that has actual value. Uh, people that were lucky enough to have been around in the 70s and 80s remember which investments did well and which investments were wiped out during the oil crisis at that time. And what did well was precious metals and commodities, and what did poorly was bonds and many stocks. 
so that's the first thing you can do, but that's just part of it. I mean, even if you don't have many savings, you can still prepare. You can still consider that uh, maybe you can afford a long commute now, but can you afford a long commute if your gas prices are three times higher in real terms? Maybe you can put uh, a lot of gas into your SUV now, but do you really want to buy another SUV if gas is going to cost three times as much in the future? Another thing you can do is just becoming more self-sufficient in general. You can learn to cook for yourself, and that will help a lot when grocery prices go up, because basically our entire agriculture is based on petroleum, and and uh, the price of food will probably go up along with all other commodities that uh, need petroleum to be produced cheaply. So there's a lot you can do. and. For this generation, whether you succeed or fail in life may well depend on how prepared you are for peak oil. Now, the media doesn't talk about this because it's not really in anyone's interest to panic people. So this is really an issue that the next generation needs to be aware of and needs to be prepared for, and the sooner you start, the better.